Hello there. Happy spring. We are talking spring cleaning, but not our house, our bodies. I'm talking about spring cleaning your body. And I hate to use the word detox because it gets overused and it gets to be a scary word, like thinking you have to eat nothing for seven days, 30 days. No, I'm not talking about those kinds of crazy detoxes, those really intense detoxes. I'm talking about natural ways to detox your body. We've had a rough year and always coming out of winter. I think everyone feels a little heavier in their bodies, but I want to go through some natural, gentle, safe ways to clean your body. And I've been going over some of this for the last week or two. I've talked about the dirty dozen. That's your list of ingredients, produce items, fruits and vegetables that have the most amount of pesticides and that you may want to consider buying organic because there are less pesticides with organic. Then you have your pots and pans. I told you some of my favorite pots and pans that don't have the PFOAs and other chemicals leaching chemicals into your food. So you've got clean food coming in, you're cooking it well, you're storing it well, but there's just so many chemicals everywhere. It's in the air we breathe and when we eat out and in our water and in our soil. Some estimate that we have 85,000 chemicals in use in the US, 85,000 chemicals. And the CDC uh, looked and they found about 200 of these chemicals inside our bodies right now, 200. We don't want these in our body. They can lead to diseases. And I don't want to scare you too much because the body is a wonderful filterer. <laughs> Not easy to say, but your body does filter the chemicals out to a certain extent. But when you're talking 85,000 chemicals in the air, in our cookware, in our food, in sprays, everywhere, it's really hard to get all of that out naturally. And the older we get, the harder it is to keep up with this. So that's why I want to talk about some natural ways that you can spring clean your body or just keep up on these regularly. So it's not a big, ah, oh, I got to do a big detox. If you keep up with some of these uh, principles on a regular basis, you're not going to feel that toxic load as much. So how do you know if you're toxic? How do you know if chemicals might be influencing you? You might feel fatigued just super low energy. Your skin might not look like you want it to. Your digestion might be sluggish. You might have brain fog. All of those things can be a chemical buildup. And the three areas I want to talk about that help the body detox naturally, liver, kidney, and the lymphatic system. These three are filterers. They help your body rid yourself of toxins. So I'm going to talk about these in relation to five behaviors that you can do to naturally detox your body. Let's start with food. You know, I'm going to talk about food. If you haven't been to my website, tastingpage.com, I've got all sorts of healthy recipes on how to eat well so you can feel well. So, we don't want to put extra strain on the liver and kidney. What strains the liver and kidney? Processed foods, sugar, junk food. All of that is just added pressure, added filtering to your system. So what you do instead, there are some healthier ingredients like cilantro, for instance. I love cilantro. Cilantro is a great filterer. It actually helps remove heavy metals from your body. It helps with phthalate removal. Dandelion greens are also a really great natural detoxifier because they're bitter. Any of the bitter green herbs or just greens, garugula, those help stimulate bile in your body and they help move things through your body. Beets, beets, great for your liver. Again, we're trying to show the liver a lot of love because we're putting, piling things on top of the liver to detox. So beets, really good for your liver. 
And then yours, there's your cruciferous vegetables, which is broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, kale. Those are great vegetables because they're full of fiber. You want to keep everything moving. You don't want to get clogged up. All of those chemicals get clogged up and then they're stuck in your body and then that's the digestive issues, that's your skin issues. Um, so fiber is great to keep things um, moving through. And not only that, but those vegetables have tons of vitamins and antioxidants. So all of those help build your cells as well. So that's food, you know, take the bad stuff off, the stuff that's hard to process, your sugars, your junk food, your alcohol. And I'm not saying not to have any of this ever, but if you're feeling super sluggish and you're like, oh, I just want some energy back, look at what you're eating, look at what you're drinking. I know for me, I kind of choose my poisons. If I'm going out and having a meal that's a little bit off my diet, I'm gonna reduce my drinking because that's just overloading my system so much. So you, it's information is key. You get to choose how you, how you feel by what you're eating, what you're doing, what you're drinking. So that brings me to exercise, movement. You wanna get the blood flowing through your body. The blood flowing, again, is gonna help move things along and then helps your lymphatic system drain. Now the lymphatic system is like our waste removal system. And here's the thing about the lymphatic system. It doesn't move on its own. Like our heart has a pump and it just does its thing without us thinking, oh, I gotta remember to beat my heart. Now we don't have to do that. The lymphatic system doesn't move on its own, which is unfortunate because it's clearing our waste out. So movement is really key, exercise. All of that is really good to get the blood flowing and to get your lymphatic system to drain. So one way to get your lymphatic system moving that is fabulous is using a little trampoline, a little rebounder. They sell them on Amazon, little round guys, bouncing up and down like that, that moves your lymphatic system. Even if you have one of those stability balls, one of those big round balls, and you sit on it for work or whatever, just bouncing a little bit, you don't have to do huge jumps, just a little bit of bounce, that is moving your lymphatic system. Also, breathing deeply, just filling your lungs up, getting them really ah, full. We don't take deep breaths during the day. We take a lot of shallow breaths. And when we're stressed, we take even more shallow breaths. So we really wanna breathe deeply into our lungs. That's gonna actually help us push out toxins. And when we exercise, we can work up a sweat. Sweating is really good for your body. It helps you get rid of toxins. So sweat if you can, move your body, bounce up and down on a trampoline, on a rebounder, but just make sure to move. And also, if you were like me, what I used to do, and sometimes still fall into the habit of, big workout in the morning, I get a one hour big workout in, I do a class, and then I sit on my butt the rest of the day. Great to do a big workout in the morning, but you also need to move throughout the day and it doesn't have to be a big workout again, but just movement, whether you set an alarm once an hour to do a lap around the house, around the block, gotta move the body. It's gonna help move the lymphatic system, your blood flow, and it's gonna make you feel better. It's gonna get endorphins going in your body and that is always a fabulous thing. Next up, natural detoxing, hydration. Hydration is so underrated. I know it's not sexy. Yeah, drink water. Yeah, 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 I know. No, hydration is key. And especially the older we get, we have less water in our bodies and we have a decreased thirst response, meaning we don't feel thirsty that often, which means we're not gonna drink water. It's a vicious cycle. So you need to force yourself to drink water. Water is fabulous. It again, moves things, moves the toxins through your body, keeps you at a good temperature, ideally. And you can tell when you're dehydrated. Headaches, headaches are a common cause of dehydration, or common effect of dehydration. Um, muscle cramps can also, um, dehydration can cause muscle cramps. 
and then you get tired and then you want to eat poorly so all of this can be related to hydration drink some water they say to drink minimum half your body weight half in ounces that should be the minimum you're likely going to need more than that maybe three quarters more you'll know you can see how you feel you can see if you wake up with a headache you got cramps all of those things so drink your water especially if you're uh, exercising a lot and as it gets warmer and you sweat when you sweat you lose water which is great again the sweating is good but just make sure you replenish hydration is key that helps flush toxins helps remove waste from the body so you definitely want to drink water i always like to start my day with a big eight ounce 12 ounce glass of water i used to do warm water a little lemon maybe a little salt if uh, i need the extra hydration if i have a little bit of a headache so that's just a great way to know you get whoop, eight ounces done first thing in the morning before you do anything because we do tend to lose uh, water as well while we sleep the next idea i have for you you may or may not have heard of and it's all about opening your pores with dry brushing you ever seen one of these dry brush What's great about this is this works on the lymphatic system, which I talked about, we have to manually move. This helps move your lymphatic system. And what you do before you get into the shower, uh, you brush your entire body, you brush up to the heart. So always up to the heart area. Uh, you brush a couple times over every area and then you take your shower. You, you'll notice you might have some dry skin, but this is also great for the skin. Don't do your face or your chest. That's usually a pretty sensitive area. They do have special brushes that are softer. I don't do those areas. Uh, I just do my legs and arms and back uh, and then take the shower. But this is great because it helps improve your circulation. Again, good for the lymphatic system. Got to move that manually. And then it's good for blood flow and it exfoliates our skin it removes the dead skin cells helps improve circulation they say it may even reduce cellulite so all of that is great it takes a few minutes if that to do before you shower and it's also a little invigorating so it's a little pick-me-up too and last but not least you gotta sleep you gotta sleep sleeping is when you get everything filed away in your body in your brain it allows you to wake up feeling restored and energetic you need the energy to do all those things i just talked about and i know this can be a lot but it can also just become a regular part of your routine and not something you have to think about once a year and that's what i work with my health coaching clients with how to create behaviors so you can feel good year round that it's not just this one and done Oh, I just need to do this one thing and feel better. Like I, I try and teach behaviors that you can implement in your life forever, not just little fatty, weird things that you do, you know, once every 10 years and you're fine. That, first of all, that doesn't exist. <laughs> that, that's a dream. We got to kind of do the regular maintenance, especially as we get older, the little things start to pile up. So when we can keep these regular behaviors, we can start feeling better on a regular basis. So you have any questions for me or you want to learn how to work with me one on one shoot me a message leave me a message below and i will get back to you have a great day